And welcome back as we launch from the interactive studio our coverage of this game between Penrith and Canterbury from out there at Penrith Football Stadium on this Sunday afternoon. Oppressive conditions at Penrith. I must stress, we are not there. We're from the interactive studio, despite what you may hear in the background. We are not there. We're watching Channel 9 just like you all are at the moment. And um, there is a precedent for this to be done. I'll shortly go to Bob Fulton. He's pretending to be on the sideline. Daryl Brown is pretending to be in the co-commentary position. And Mark Riddell's pretending to be in a cherry picker overlooking the ground. Let's go down to the sideline right now. Bob Fulton, very good afternoon to you. Yeah, good afternoon, Ray. Jesus, it's great to be on the sideline for the first time in 28 years. Look, Ray, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm really going to inject information when called upon. I will treat this like my own show, complete with live reads. Wait for this, Ray. You're doing live reads. Let's do this. Yeah, I'll do one right now, if you like. What, what is it? You've well, never done a live read before. Well, I'm going to do one. It's yeah. all right, here we go. Yeah. Join the TV revolution in store online with new range of TCL at the best prices. Now at Harvey Norman. Get in and see, Jerry. He's the short ball black with a Channel 9 teeth. Thanks, Bob. Tough. Um, try and just get the information flowing there. Bob, stop reading commercials from the <laughs> sideline. Daryl Brayman's in the broadcast box with us. Hello, Daryl. Yeah, great to be in the broadcast box with you, Pretending. Ray. It's uh, pretty hot out here today at Penrith. The uh, air conditioning's not working in this box, and it's 37 degrees in here, so it's quite hot. Okay, thank Looking you. Looking forward to the game. Piggy's up in the uh, <laughs> tower. Hey good afternoon. Pig. Yeah, good. It's not as, not as hot up here because of the air. Uh, so it's a bit cooler here. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to have a look down on the ground. It's beautiful conditions as we see the Bulldogs run out. OK. From the interactive studio. So we'll keep you in contact with what's happening. So what are we take... doing? Are we gonna, you're not calling it. We're just going to talk about it. No, we might call some of it. We might just see how it goes. You know that I can't help myself when I get into a game of rugby league. I break I've, into I've just got a problem here, Ray, with uh, yeah. my equipment. <laughs> oh, no. I seem to be... <laughs> We've got Chuck down on the touchline. Like, What's doing, Chuck? I seem to be... Chuck Fulton. Oh, it's a little bit hot down here, Ray. I probably need some of this blue spray. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the That's deodorant enough. going over hey, time. Why are we talking I just need... Hey, Ray, I need an umbrella down here, man. <laughs> Put a hat on, Chuck. Oh, okay. Chuck Fulton. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Back to you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's been good. That's a good start. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, go, it's Harry. Canterbury and Penrith, and uh, we're not allowed to call it, so we'll just tell you what's happening through the course of the game. I don't know why we're not allowed to call it. The NRL uh, is supposed to give us rights to a yeah. 2 o'clock game, then don't give us the 2 o'clock game. What are they on about, the NRL? Yeah. The big Back in the studio, Gav, have you got the try music? Yeah, beautiful. Okay, that, just in case. Now, the referees for this game, Ben Cummins is the main referee. He's the number one referee. The assistant is Gavin Reynolds. The touch judges are Grant Atkins and Brett Sutter. And Kevin Shane Hayne is in the video rest box with Henry Perinara. It's a bit of a first for rugby league because it's a long time since we saw live rugby league on a Sunday afternoon. And although it's not live right across Australia, it's certainly live in New South Wales and the ACT. They've got their pink jumpers on, and there's Quasi's bell ringing in the background. Mm. Chuck Fulton's bell is ringing in the background there. It's a very big crowd. Jamie Soward on camera at the moment from the interactive studio. What do you think of him when he had his moustache? No, it was a, an ordinary moustache. Oh. Ordinary moustache. And there are the pantherettes. A couple of our girls there. Mm. From the back of the program. Jessica lovely girls. and Natalie. Yeah. Police officer and a law student. Fantastic. James Seguiaro. Yes. Anyway, Matt Moylan's a fullback now. It looks like Canterbury will defend the northern end of the ground. The southern end will be defended by the Bulldogs, northern Bulldogs, Penrith, southern end. And the kickoff is going to go back towards the goal line. And Penrith are going to have first use of the football here. As I can't call it, but I can tell you what's happening. As they're brought down about nine metres out from their own goal line, Penrith. No score on the board after just a few seconds of play. And they bring the ball up towards the 20 and put down in centre field. So not allowed to call it? No, I'm not allowed to call it. You know, so I wouldn't tell you, like, Seguiaro's passed the ball away on the outside to one of the Penrith players who's brought down 24 metres out, and it was a great tackle there from the second row at Josh Jackson. And I wouldn't tell you that Brent Kite was bringing the ball up over the 30 and put down 35 metres out by the same defenders, including Greg Eastwood. Or I wouldn't tell you that Seguiaro's got the ball away to Soward, who kicks from inside the 40, looking for a 40-20, goes over to the eastern touch line, but we cut off on the far side by the wing three-quarter, who brings it back. And I think you'll find that is, on the far side, Curtis Rona and jumper number two, and it is. And I couldn't tell you that he's been brought down. Piggy, can you tell me anything from the tower which you're not in? Uh, 
that was a good set from Penrith. It was a big kick from Jamie Sowd, and it's very hot up here. Daryl? Yes, well... Could you try and watch the me? game and stop punting? <laughs> <laughs> Can no, you put good, your phone down? Set, it's down. It's a good set from... Good. Them. Canterbury's got it. Okay. Even sure though we can't call it, I would like you to look at it. You want to pretend I'm calling it? Pretend you're calling it and stop okay. punting. Put All your, right. your well, app down. It's been a solid start. There's a big hit from Brent. Yeah, I, I beg your pardon? You think it's a big hit? Well, it looked like a big hit. Thank you. Yeah. And there's a kick now from Canterbury. It'll be taken and diffused back there by the wing three-quarter. Delin Watini Zelezniak, who's put down on the tackle and will be playing the ball about 10 metres out from his own line, if I'm allowed to tell you that. Uh, now they're still 10 metres out, and it's Penrith on the attack. No score on the board here, by the way. Uh, I'm hearing down the line from our man after 1 minute 40 seconds. And the first penalty of the match goes the way of Penrith, 20 metres out from their own line. A leg pull on Josh Jackson. Now, it will be interesting to see, because we can watch it, even though we can't call it, as to what they're doing in relation to penalties and people peeling off the tackle play. Yeah, well, I must admit, I haven't really noticed many of the other games any great difference in it. I, I suppose I have picked up that there is a slight increase in the speed of the play of the ball which is I think a good thing for the game well clearly a good thing for the game I did notice George Jennings who's the brother of Michael Jennings he, he only made the one run so far but it was a great run he got a penalty from it and he looks a player of the future they've got some I think they've got the best batch of young kids in the competition Penrith do you think that I do okay well done thank you now Penrith go on the attack after that penalty only 21 meters out when Eastwood makes the tackle so the Panthers looking for first blood here after only about two and a half minutes of play the ball goes out the back Back the other way to Segi Yarrow. Geez, quick off the mark, and he's put down, if I could see him, 11 metres out from the goal line. Now, Wallace goes to acting half. Soward goes to the line. Back on the inside, he's met by the defence. The number eight is there. That's Tolman to put him down, two metres out from the goal line. Segi Yarrow back to acting half. They didn't get off him quickly there. It should have been a penalty to Penrith, but it wasn't. They'll go kicking on the fifth tackle from Wallace. It's coming down towards the post. Rona's gone high for it. The ball's there. They can't quite get it down. And I think you'll find that Rona's come up with it despite the attention of George Jennings over the top. So the referee's going to play a double knock-on. The first knock-on by Canterbury, the second by Penrith. So he will pack a scrum down 10 metres out from the Canterbury goal line. That will be a Canterbury loosened feed. From what I can see from the Channel Line coverage, which, as usual, is outstanding. Bob Fulton, I should say, Chuck Fulton's on the sideline. You there, Chuck? Yeah, God damn it, Ray. Let me do my job. I mean, I'm just checking on injured players here. Are there any injuries, Chuck? No. <laughs> this man is immortal, ladies and gentlemen. We've turned an immortal into a gibbering idiot. Yeah. He's Magoo on steroids. Oh. He's done very good at it. Oh. Look, I, don't, I hate to talk football here, but I'm getting the feeling that Curtis Rohn is going to be in for a busy afternoon on that wing. Mm. I think they're going to kick to him all day. Jamal Idris. Now, by the way, he's ruled that Canterbury knocked on first there. Yeah, they did. So it was a Penrith loose and feed. So there you go. And this is... Uh, Kite, I think, taking the ball within a metre of the goal line. Put down by James Graham and Tolman. Segi Yaro went from acting half, flicked it out the back, came to Soward. Soward quick hands away. They step back on the inside. Lewis Brown is trying to step around them. Back on the inside he comes before he's put down on the tackle. Lewis, about two or three metres out from the Canterbury goal line, if I could tell you that. Segi Yaro goes from acting half, then pops it out the back. Soward flicks it away on the right-hand side, back to Moylan. Moylan dances around. He'll throw a dummy, then he'll be put down on the tackle. He's only five out. He's going to unload the ball out the back. It's come back to McKendry, and McKendry's put down. Enterprising stuff by Penrith here. Then the ball comes away to Wallace. Wallace is going to step back on the inside, then get the ball back away. It's gone all behind them. They're going to have to rush back for it now, and I think it'll go back to Dean Farray, the centre three-quarter, who's put down. He's playing right centre, and it'll be Jamal Idris at left centre. Segi Garo, this would nearly be the fifth tackle, and Sowood, oh, he's hit as he kicked the ball, but not savagely. It's going to come down, and it's, oh, that's come off Perrot. That's come off Perrot. This will be another scrum feed to Penrith, Darren. Well, having all the play at the moment, the Panthers, they need to capitalise on this. Perrot not happy with this. He's, they've ruled it's come off Perrot. He's rushed, rushed up to the referee to say, have a look at it on the video screen, but they're not going to do that, I don't think. And this will be another scrum feed to the Panthers here. As Sowood put the ball in the air, uh, there was a Penrith player, the winger coming through, I think, Martin Zalesniak putting pressure on Perrot. They've ruled it's come off Perrot, so this will be a scrum feed to the Panthers. Now, they've had all the play and you would like to think, if you're a Penrith supporter, they really should be putting some points on the board here in this next, next set of six. Yeah, George Jennings is over on this left wing, so it was him who put the pressure in, but gee, it's a good kick when you think about it, because it was right on the touchline. They get it out wide, Wallace Moylan. The ball's gone out wide towards the touchline. They throw it back on the inside, intercepted by Canterbury. Gee, that's a bad play. Surrendering possession on without a tackle being affected after a scrum win 10 metres out from the goal line. Yeah, look, 
I like Penrith in this game, but I, I, they've had all the ball to open it with. They've had all the opportunities, but they haven't been able to score a try. Canterbury's defence has been pretty good considering the field position that Penrith have had. Mm. And given the amount of ball they've had in such a, a great attacking position, I think the Pandas would be very disappointed they've come up with nothing here. James says, I love the way you don't call the game, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, that's what we're trying to do, Jane. That's what we're trying to achieve, not calling it, but telling you what's happening. Bears 24, 24 after 49 minutes in the New South Wales Cup. And we'll get some Queensland Cup. Is this a 40-20 attempted? I think it is by Canterbury. I think it is. And young Josh Reynolds has come up with a 40-20. And they're rushing down to take the tap because they take it quickly now. The referee says they weren't set. What's the ruling here with that thing? No, does? they've got to set it because of the ball boy incident last year with Parramatta. They've got to set it now. Okay. okay. And he wasn't on the mark and he didn't take the tap. There's so one, got... I think there was one the other night as well, wasn't there? Yeah, there the was. Same thing. Yeah. 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 I think it was no, because night. of the ball boy oh, incident, no, they, no. they said, you know, if the referee's on the mark and they get there quickly, but the referee was on the mark, couldn't give it, so they had to call them back. Uh, the ball was taken forward by Tim Laffey, by the way. So anyway, Canterbury going on the attack now. Leisha was at uh, acting half, and the ball goes away on the outside of Williams around the corner. Oh. I don't know why he passed. I reckon if he reaches out, he scores. You know that Tony Williams? That Tony Williams, he's heart attack material. <laughs> he's big enough to hold a bull out the piddle, oh. and he gets straight over the top of two defenders. I think it's Wallace underneath. He could have scored oh, himself. Oh, my God. He's not, and It's been knocked back. Yes. The only good news is it was knocked back by the winger on that far side. And that'd be uh, with Tini Zalesniak. And as a result of him knocking it back and forcing it, it'll be a goal line dropout. But, I mean, fair. Geez, he does some funny things. Chuck, are you down there on the sideline? <laughs> yeah, Ray, listen, it's Bozo here. Look, Chuck's one of the brass game. That'll just get back to you. OK, thanks yeah. very much, Bob. So we've got Chuck full. You tell him to hurry. He's a lot better than you. <laughs> 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 okay, thanks, Daryl. I'm back now. I'm back now. That's Bob. Uh, he's Very from good. Kentucky. It's Bob cousin from Kentucky. <laughs> Chuck Kentucky. Fulton. Now that you wouldn't believe it, on the first set of six, James Graham's put it down as cold as his butt from the goal line dropout. So they've. I mean, I know it's hot. We're talking about it being 34, 35, 36 degrees out there. Uh, possibly 37 at the centre, but that was a ball that was probably wasn't not intended for Graham, the captain, and he lost it. And so it'll be a scrum feed going the way of Penrith now. He was sorted out by Sikamanu in defence for Penrith. Uh, just checking the clock now. We've had around eight minutes of play and uh, it's seesawed from one end to the other. No score on the board. No score on the board. I should give you a sponsor update, I suppose, with no score on the board as well. I don't know whether I'm allowed to give you a sponsor update, saying I'm not calling the game, but no score on the board uh, for uh, Lowe's menswear. Yeah, you'd be disappointed yeah. with that, James Graham. Is a catch. Uh, you would normally take it, but it was a poor pass. Mm. Michael Leacher playing at hooker for the Bulldogs, a swap, direct swap with uh, Michael Ennis from the Bulldogs and the Sharks from last year. So Michael Leach at, at dummy half. He's got to do better than that. That was a poor pass. You, even though he's a big, talented front row, we all know that about James Graham. You need to get a ball on your chest, just the same. Seager Manu is playing on the right-hand side and Lewis Brown plays on the left-hand side. They're over halfway, the Penrith side, I'm told, down the line by a men there, uh, Billy McGee. And they're now 35 metres out as I visualise what's happening. Uh, Genius. Uh, Wallace is going to kick over the top, I'm told, and the ball's going to come down for the fullback who takes it quite well. Um, and they'll bring the ball back. And, of course, I'm referring to Canterbury fullback Brett Morris. Jeez, he looks like Josh, doesn't he? Yeah, unbelievable. Unca uncanny resemblance between the twins. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's Sam Perrett now, I think you'll find. Or, in fact, is it Sam Perrett? No, it might be Curtis Rona who brought the ball back. It was Curtis Rona. So, Billy, make sure you get the right players for me because we're doing this blind even though we're watching the Channel 9 coverage. Uh, James Gra Oh, James Ooh. Graham. Is that Kite? He met him head on with a James Graham type tackle. Yeah, it was Kite. He's had a nice start to the game, Brent Kite. Mm. I mean, he, that's their strength. I think the two front rows for the Bulldogs, very strong players, and the Panthers need to make a make, make a statement here. Reynolds has started well too. His kicking game is always very good, and he's just dabbed another. I think he's dabbed another one down there towards the try line. George Jennings will pick this up. I love George Jennings. Our boy Joe Rowe. <laughs> <laughs> that's George Jensen. Order, Judy. His oh. wife, Judy. Jane. His wife? Jane. No, Jane's his wife, isn't it? Yeah, Jane. Where's his Judy? Wife. Daughter, Judy. Jane. His wife. His... Dun, 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 what's the name his of the... Boy, what's the name of the maid? Is it Hazel? No, I don't think uh, it's Hazel. I think you're thinking of um, yeah, well, Adam's yeah. family or something. No, no, it's Brady Bunch. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there's a show called Hazel. You know what? I think we're funny as you're doing this. Don't worry about not calling <laughs> Zachary said, keep this up, it's better than calling a game. <laughs> we're not really calling a game. Anyway, uh, Penrith have the ball. No score on the board after ten and a half minutes. I can just hear rabbits in the background. How are you going, Rabs? Prostate all right, son? Good on you. Thank you, mate. Now, 
I think it might be George Jennings down. Mm. It is George Jennings. Yeah, you you the... know, if someone was really inventive back in the studio, they'd get the music out for the Jetsons, <laughs> yeah. and we could play that while George we call the game. Judy. Every Did time you, George you, Jennings got it. I think Chuck Fulton's back with us. G'day, Chucky. Hi, Ray. I've just got another live read here. <laughs> no, Ch Chuck, yeah. you're barred from doing live no, reads. No, I've got one. It's a good one. What is uh, it? Oh, it's a court's hire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just broken into my English accent now. <laughs> well, Ray, if you're a tradie, you can count on Coates Hardham to help make your project happen. Get the Coates now and have a chat with our man, Clive Coates. Clive Coates? He owns the joint, Ray. By the way, uh, update in the Queensland Cup. East Tigers over the Northern Pride, 15 to go, 20 points to 6. Uh, Redcliffe over Tweed Heads by 22-20. Big comeback by Tweed Heads. And PNG, what about this one, Daryl? What's happened? South Logan, PNG lead them 32-12 at Davies Park. So That's they've come down great from, effort from, uh, from Papua New Guinea and lead by a big score. I wish I knew what was happening out there, but I'm almost certain that Josh Jackson's put on report yeah. for a crusher, I think. And it was a tackle on Jennings, I think. Yeah, I think there was, he got a double whammy there, Jennings. He got hit Did you say hard. George Jennings? Yep. <laughs> Come back to that a little while because the Panthers are on the attack, I'm told, down the line. Uh, cue that a bit later on there, one on if you don't mind. Sigi Yaro with a big dummy. Goes to Wallace. Oh, quick hands oh. away. That's brilliant play. They're going to score a magnificent try, I think, by the wing three-quarter on the far side, Dallin Watini the Lesniak, but it was just quick hands, Daryl. Now, if you could just get the crystal ball out and go through the replay, if you could see the replay on what happened there. Could you do that for yeah, me, Yeah, I'll possibly? try and do that, but it was, again, they've been throwing a lot of stuff at the uh, at the Bulldogs all afternoon down that side, but it was a brilliant backline move. I think it started by uh, Peter Wallace. Seguiaro got out of dummy half, threw a beautiful cutout ball to Wallace, a cutout ball to the fullback, and it, it's just a brilliant tip on, firstly by the fullback, Matt Moylan, and secondly, from Dean Farray, I think. There was a double tip on there, went straight into the chest of Delin Watini Zalesniak, and he scored in the corner. That's hard no. It's a Dallin Watini Hey, Zalesniak. hey, Darrell, how do you pronounce that again? Delin. Chuck, don't Wittini come in until you're up. Oh, okay. Okay. But okay, I'll tell really. you, the, the effort of both Moylan and also Farray, exceptional. They're both tap-ons, mm. and they needed to be tap-ons, otherwise that's try otherwise that try wouldn't have happened. Well, I've just had the better for the Channel 9 replay. Darrell, you're exactly right. As they went to the right-hand side, uh, and Wallace was heavily involved. If it wasn't two tap-ons, the ball would not have gone to Dallin Wateni Zalesniak in the message. <laughs> it's a tough. Oh, it's a tough. Can oh, you give us one yeah. of them, Chuck? Oh, I don't know about that, big man. Come on. Darren Moylan. <laughs> <laughs> you go back to the toilet. Oh, I just, yeah, get back to the toilet. Talking. Talking. I like talking like that myself. Hey, how are you going, Piggy, up there in the towel? Yeah, I'm good. Him? I'm good. It was a nice try. Can you contribute in any way, shape, there's or form? There's a slight southerly blowing up here. What it's goes on up there if you've got to go to the toilet? Hang on, Panthers lead 4-0. Mm. Sound from the touch line. Beautiful kick. Leather perfect straight between the uprights. They now lead by 6-0. 6-0. Got, got a bucket. You got a bucket. Well, you know what? That's a great kick from Jamie Sow. And I think, remember they beat them in the semi-final last year. It was a controversial game. That, that's a brilliant bit of work from both oh, those boys there. Right. You know, it, Moylan is a quality player. And so's Farray. I really think Farray's a, a really good player. Brilliant bit of work from both of them. Now, I've just been reminded by Chuck Fulton that the replay came your way thanks to Coach Hire. Keep your job on time, on budget. Coats higher, 13, 15, 52. Now we might hear the music of the Jetsons as a tribute to George Jetson. <laughs> Daughter Judy. Yeah, James right. White. James White. Change is right. Rosie, by the way, is the maid. <laughs> From the set of six, from the kickoff, I'm told by my man there, Billy McGee, that they got to the set of six and a left-footed kick went downfield from Jamie Soward. And I'm told that Canterbury have the ball about 32 metres out of their own line and they'll try to run the ball back through the wing three-quarter, Sam Perrett, who got it away from Curtis Rayner, who's on the left wing and Sam's on the right wing. And I'm told they're about 11 metres short of halfway. And here's Tony Williams. Don't pass it! Just run, you big thing! <laughs> Yeah. Could, would, I, would I be fair to assume you're not a big fan of his? Well, you know as what? As a footballer? I hate, I hate untapped ability potential. and potential. And if he just put the ball under his arm and ran, he's 120 kilos, big enough to hold a bull out to do what you know what, 
and he wants to be Arthur Beetson and Bob O'Reilly turned into one. Mm. Oh, what a kick oh. return by Moylan. He's just got fair to him everything. He's, that, that kick return, he was he was nailed down in the southeastern corner, no room to move, and he got he, he just sort of danced past about six players and got the ball back to the 30 from the kick return. Yeah. Now, here's the try scorer, Wateen Zalesniak. In fact, no, it's not. It's Faray. Faray, the right centre, who's doing it. He's over there on the right side of the field. So, I'll bring it back again. I think this might be our man, George. And he's put down the tackle, George Jetson. You know what? Mm. The fullback, Matt Moylan, don't mm. forget that Jessica and Natalie both like him yeah. as a person. Yes, exactly, because he's got a wonderful personality and he gets his hair cut <laughs> twice a week. He does. <laughs> no, he's got nice personality. I mean, yes. the, the you young blokes listening out there, if some girl says you've got a lovely personality, that means you've got a head like a robber's dog. <laughs> Just cop the tip. Okay, if, if, you, if you're asking a girl that and she's, look, I'd love to get you got a lovely personality, mate, have a look in the mirror. Okay, Sam Perrett's taken the ball beautifully, by the way, and I think he might have been tackled mid there as he went up for it. Yes. But they said no, he plays it. Well, Jamal Idris went up for it, and Jamal Ooh. sort of heard. you think that would be a penalty. I would have thought that, well, not that I saw it, but I would have thought that was tipped over the horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it, but I thought it, would have, it was on Laffey, by did. the way. <laughs> hey, hey, Chuck, what's doing down the sideline oh, there, Chuck? Oh, boy? Chuck not much. I'm just looking at all the homework that Big's doing. He's, <laughs> he's really into this game. Can you do another ad for us, Chuck? No, listen, no. you drop off with the ads. <laughs> Well, well, you know what we better yeah. do right now with the Panthers leading the Bulldogs by 6-0. We need to talk to Chuck about his ad reading. <laughs> so let's take a break on the continuous call. The continuous call team on 2GB is thanks to Holden. Coles Supermarkets, Coates Hire, Shimano, McDonald's, Tire Power and Brighton's Compensation Lawyers. Yes, back from the interactive studio and uh, Jason just sent an email which encapsulates what we're doing here. This is the best call I've never heard. Well, this is the best call we've never done, Jason, so thank you very much. Appreciate that. We're with uh, Chuck Fulton on the sideline. Daryl's uh, pretending to be in the broadcast box, as I am. And, of course, pretending to be in a tower above the ground is Piggy Riddell. Now, they've made some ground here, Canterbury. Uh, they got a penalty, and uh, as a result of that penalty, James Graham has got the ball up to within 20 of the goal line. And here's big Tony Williams again, straight over the top of them. And uh, thought about unloading when he met Sika Manu. And he's 10 metres out. They get the ball back the other way to Eastwood. Uh, then it comes back to Reynolds, who will go to the air. Right boot. They're coming up high for it. The ball's been, I think, touched by uh, the Canterbury player. It may well have been Sam Perrett. And as a result, it's an option to restart the 20-metre line. So they did well on this side of the field. Uh, the winger on this side, George Jetson. Um, Perrett went high, but it came off Perrett's shoulder having touched George Jetson and going backwards. Yeah, Idris did a pretty good job too. He got in, well, I think he got in the way of Sam Perrett there and sort of bumped him as he was going up for the ball. So he really didn't get a great shot at it. But the Panthers, they look impressive here today. They, they, they look, their backs look sharp. I like the look of both their wingers. They're both young men. Uh, George Jennings and Wateni Zalesniak. Jeez, uh, I think they've got a good group of young players. Lyndon says, get Bozo back. <laughs> Chuck's running out of steam. <laughs> Where is Chuck? Is he got in the toilet again? Can you see him down there? G'day, Chuck E. Uh, I'm still here, Ray. Uh, eh? I'm, I'm down here at GL. And you know what that is? Ground level. Ground level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, Ray, I've got to say something about this. I mean, it's a, the game's a little bit foreign to me, but look, the pink team seem to have all the running at the moment. <laughs> got to see this team with the blue and white with a coach with a really long hair who looks a pretty much a goose, right? <laughs> I mean, what are we doing here? Uh, nothing. Me. We're pretending to call a game that we're not really calling. <laughs> Seek a mark. Why am I talking like an American yeah, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, I, don't think, I don't think Coach Hassel's going to be happy with my comments. <laughs> oh, you know his I, name then. <laughs> yeah, I do. I just looked at the program. <laughs> <laughs> He's soured kicking over the top of Penrith. Uh, great take by Sam Perrett again. He's done well, uh, Daryl, if we could have seen that. He's defused two bombs particularly well. That oh. one wasn't a high one. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's actually, no, he's done very well. He's been put under extreme pressure. But they're now struggling to get out of their own area here. The, uh, what the were you belt. doing and owing for then? I couldn't uh, see well, what he was doing. When he got up, he sort of fell into... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Piggy can see from piggy. up high. Piggy yeah, I just thought it. Sam Perrett fell back down with his knee. I'm sure, I think it was Jamal Idris underneath mm. him. Mm. It just looked a little bit uh, unsavoury. Okay, now Lars Roy, our Swedish backpack, uh, tells me that the Bears Hello. leading Wendy. Hello, Lars. 24 points to 10 Bears over Wendy after 65 minutes, New South Wales Cup. That's for Shimano. Uh, speaking of live reads, I listened to David Murray's call last night. A bloke that's not working commercial stage for his reference to the sponsor score was very good, not to mention a great call. Yeah, well, Jeff, it's foreign territory for Thirsty doing sponsors reads. He's been over there for nearly four decades not doing them, so. He's acclimatised very quickly, I agree with you. Now, here's the ball back with Penrith after kick downfield by Dallin, Wettini, Zalesniak. 
And here he is, there's George. A bit of drama in the background Ooh, here. There's a brouhaha and a fracas, a sure. contretemps. James Graham, Shigiyaro involved. Now let's go to a man who's got the eyes of the eagle. Did who's you see that? that, Piggy? Yeah, it was a bit of a scuffle between both sides. Sikamanu was in there as well. James Graham, James Sergiaro, a bit of a mismatch, those two. But uh, I'm not sure what started it. Well, teens are like if I was the accident, if I was if I was watching it, I'd be able to tell you. But um, Chuck, what's his hey, name? Hey, listen, you know, you're to call him. Well, WZ. Yeah, I think so. WZ was certainly involved. There was three uh, of them in Josh there. Josh Reynolds. Two halves were involved. Josh that Jackson. was Josh Jackson. Now, Josh Jackson, I think, got pushed down. Yeah. But. WZ. Yeah, when he was marking. And then they just came from everywhere. Let's call him WZ. Yeah, good WZ. WZ. You right with that, Chuck, down there, WZ? I've got a bit of a problem, Ray, with what happened just there. I mean, uh, what's his handbags at about five pieces or something? <laughs> what is, what's wrong with some punches being thrown? <laughs> oh, yeah, good on you, Chuck. I know you're from Kentucky, the deep south. Things like that happened down there. There's not much doing. There was a hand push. There was a push. It wasn't a punch, I mean. Jamie Soud's involved, too, I know. They're all involved. I think uh, Hodkinson got involved in yeah. this. WZ then pushed Jackson, as you say. And they've stopped Ooh. play, by the way. And, oh, Jackson. There's, someone came in over the top there. Yeah, it was. And McKendry, I think. No, it was actually Jeremy Lattimore came oh, in was over it? the top, yeah. Okay, so he's just on the field as a replacement. Jeremy Lattimore, and he's come over the top. There's a push in the face. They're having a look at it. The video referee's checking it all. Henry Perinara and Kevin Shane Hayne. And there's a, uh, you know, I, I, it's not enough to send anyone to the bin or apart from giving a penalty, that's going to be some total of it, I would imagine. Yeah, it's just a lot of pushing, shoving, falling over. Mm. There's been about eight or nine players involved. So let's take a break. The continuous call team on 2GB is thanks to Holden. Coles Supermarkets, The Daily and Sunday Telegraph, IMB, Accor Hotels and Blackwoods. And welcome back after that brouhaha fracas contretemps. Uh, the penalty went to Canterbury for pushing against Penrith, which is unforgivable uh, when Penrith are in possession inside their own 30, but you wouldn't want to know. They had six tackles after the penalty. Who do you reckon put a little chip through and went over the dead ball line? Mm. My man, Tony Williams. <laughs> My man, Tony Williams, who kicked the ball <laughs> dead, giving <laughs> it back to the Panthers. <laughs> oh, I mean, fair <laughs> dick. Put off your head and take it off and put on a uh, pumpkin. <laughs> oh. You've never been a big rapper. No, well, mate, he's just such a good player and he oh. does such dumb things. Mm. I mean, like I say, his asset is that he's 120 kilos, he runs even time for the 100, put the ball under your arm and run. Stop kicking, <laughs> stop passing, just run! You know when he nearly played his best football last year, quite remarkably, he was playing halfback. Yeah. Anyway, let's go to Chuck. Chuck, Chuck you, you know, Ray, you're, you're getting pretty angry. damning with uh, with our man Williams. I mean, please, I mean, do, don't you like him? <laughs> no, I like him. I just wish he wouldn't be so dumb on the football field, Chuck. Yeah, hey, well, Ray, i got to say... There's plenty of players that are dumb. Thanks, Jack. That's wise wisdom from Jack from Kentucky. <laughs> what are you doing there, Piggy? Kentucky fried over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a turn this Oh, been... I love that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <man>. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> oh, big. Do you mind? We're sponsored by McDonald's, you idiot. Oh, you idiot. 6-0. Oh, oh, Panthers oh, lead. Stupid. Bulldogs. 6-0. Six six yeah, you said well, it. Well, why didn't you say <laughs> it was from McDonald Town then? Instead of Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's a state. It's not a town, you fool. <laughs> Uh, Canterbury in possession after a mistake by Penrith, I'm told, down the line. How long we had here, Chuck? We've had 24 and a half minutes and Canterbury down 6-0. That's the score for Lays Menswear. Segi Yaro, the number 14's on the field now. That'll be big Sam Cassiano, who, according to Dean Ritchie, is about to re-sign. Whether that's right or not, we don't know. And now also on the field is David Clemmer, big David Clemmer. Now, that'll be the fifth tackle. They've made about 34 metres, according to David Middle and our stats man, who we share with Channel 9. And the ball's been kicked back and dived on by our man, George Jetson, his boy Elroy, and he'll play the ball inside the 10. So, yeah, Judy. Yeah, exactly. Jane, his wife. Rosie. The, I don't know if Rosie gets a mention in it. No, though. but I just... That's who she, I is, she is part of Someone it. Someone sent me an elbow, but yeah. Rosie. Okay, in the meantime. Yeah, he does look good today. He's had a, he had a great year last year for the Panthers until getting injured as the halfback. And Peter Wallace. I think he's a good player. They're going to get a penalty here, I'm predicting. By the way, uh, our man Riley, yeah. East have beaten Northern Pride 20 points to 12 full-time in the Queensland Cup. Cam Munster, man of the match. Salty rates him the next Slater. Well, he, um, saw, he signed with Melbourne, hasn't he? Yeah, Cam Munster. Big rap on him. Uh, boy, stuck at work on my Maruba Cafe. Got you guys on sound system. Best call I've heard in a while. 
but all my customers have disappeared. Go <laughs> the dog. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Uh, Ray, I've been asleep for 20 minutes. I dreamt that I was listening to the continuous call team with some crazy on the sideline. Yeah. That'd yeah. be Chuck. That'd be Chuck. Is Chuck still here? Chuck's here. We'll go to Chuck in a minute. Chuck's just uh, having a conversation on the sideline, just trying to understand the game a bit more. Now, the number 16's on for Penrith as well. That's Regan Campbell-Gillard. Now, I think you'll find he's a relation of the boys from Gerringong. Is that right, Piggy? Yeah, that's right, Ray. He's a cousin of the Sims family, so he's mm. making his debut this afternoon. A big fella, too. Geez, he's a big boy. I, I read a story in the Telegraph about him through the week. How big he is. Here's Wallace. They get the ball out the back. Moylan, dummies, back on the inside. He gave the ball back away to Dean Farray. He comes back on the inside. They have the ball. Beautiful short ball away, and they go inside the 20 now. This is a good stuff by Penrith on the attack, leading by 6-0 until Lewis Brown dropped the ball. He's appealing for a penalty. Sam, yeah, Cassiano it must have been penalised, I think. Yeah, it is. 4-2, the penalty count. The way of the Panthers. Looks fit, Cassiano. He's been a big boy. Well, always been a big boy. But he mm. looks as fit as I've seen him, Cassiano. They're going to take the tappy, I reckon, Penny. I think you're right. And that's Lattimore with it now, who is involved in the fracar contra top and the rest. Anyway, here it is with Penrith leading 6-0. Geez, it's quick, Sigiaro. They have the ball now up towards the goal line. And almost to it before the defence converges. So, Penrith... Camp right on the Canterbury goal line, northern end of Pepper Stadium. Oh, sour to the line, dummy, but good defence. He's held on the tackle. I reckon it'll be Josh Jackson who got to him. Had to make the tackle, and he did. Now back the other way from Lewis Brown. The pass comes away on the outside. Penrith with it now through the number 16, and that's that big fella, Regan Campbell-Gillard. So they are camp on this Canterbury line from about six metres out. 27 gone. Sega Yarrow run around. Then Sal, they're going to give it some air. Oh, beautiful pass out wide oh, yeah. to our man George Jetson. He's in. I think he scored, Darrell. Georgie Jennings. 10-0. Panthers lead the way of the Bulldogs. Now, Darrell, I know you can't see this, but just use your crystal ball oh, to tell me what's happening. It would have come from second phase play there. i got no doubt about that. There was one of the big forwards took the ball up. Might have been. Campbell Gillard there and he was about to he got tackled and then he, he hit the line, he managed to pop the ball out the back to Seguiaro, he threw a short pass to Soward who threw a beautifully tied pass over the top he sucked the winger in there Soward he sucked Sam Perrett who came in off the wing they were outnumbered, he came in to try and shut it down but little Jamie Soward just threw a beautifully weighted pass over the top to the winger, George Jennings who scored in the corner. 10-0 to Penrith, kick the come. The continuous call team on 2GB is thanks to Holden. Coles Supermarkets, Lowe's, Harvey Norman, Bet Easy, Paddy's Markets and AAMI. Uh, big set of six from the kickoff. And uh, by the way, Jamie Soward kicked the goal from the touchline after the try by George Jennings to make it 12-0. And then they carted the ball 80 metres. Daryl, I have not uh, seen Josh Morris, I think, touch the ball yet. I know Brett's returned a couple of kicks from fullback, but I don't yeah. think he's got involved at all. He hasn't seen the ball at all. They really haven't had much opportunity, have they? They mm. haven't had any field position. They haven't been able to... Take. Well, they've had the odd, odd occasion down there, but they've, they've just come up with nothing. But Penrith looks sharp, don't they? They look really sharp. And I don't think you can underestimate them. We were just talking off air about the impact that Peter Wallace has on this side. He, he just gives them a calmness, I think. Yeah. You know, and he directs them around the place. The dogs are going to get a penalty here, but they needed it badly. Even though they're in an attacking position, they needed it badly because they're all in the clump. No one, they're all looking at each other, wondering what's happening now because their captain's off. James Graham's off. He's on the bench at the moment, mm. so this is where they need some direction from the two halves. I'll here. tell you what, they need some points. We've got eight to go to half time. 32 gone for the low scoreboard. 12 0 to the Panthers. 12 0, and Clemmer goes on the attack from 15 metres out. I'm told down the line by a man out there, Billy McGee. So they desperately need a try here on the Channel 9 coverage. We're not at the game, of course. Oh, there's my man. There's my man. Tony Williams tried to send the ball back on the inside on the second tackle. Swooped up by the Penrith Panthers. And Tony is doing exactly in 2015 what he did in 2014. And I know the frustration is shared by a lot of Canterbury supporters. Oh, I don't think there's too much doubt about that. Uh, he, he's one of those blokes who just tries something every time he gets the ball. He does a lot of good things, but he does a lot of well, inexcusable things. Yeah. I'll tell you something. Panthers are just making metre after metre when our, they hold our the man, ball. Our man George Jennings. He's a good player. I'm not going to say he's going to be better than his brother, who's an elite athlete, but stand by for George Jetson to be oh. a name you'll hear about 
for a long, long time to come because he's done some things in this early stage of this game that not many players could do. Uh, coming in from the left wing with a roving commission up the centre of the field just then. And now we've got Tyrone Peachy on, by the way, in the fifth tackle. Segi Yaro back to South. He'll simply go to the air. Kicks back on the inside. I think Moylan's chasing through after it. It's plucked out of the air by Morris. It's Brett. And he's put down on the tackle by Soward and Wallace. And now they'll go through Perrett from acting half. Jamie Sowers lucky he wasn't pinged there. And there's another replacement coming on the field as Josh Jackson gets a breather. So Canterbury, the number... Uh, is it the number 17, Tim Brett? No, it's Frank Pritchard, the number 16 that's on. I'm sorry, Frank Pritchard's on. And that's Cassiano with the ball now. But it's 12-0 with about six and a half to go. Great ball to Clemmer from Cassiano into space. Ooh, looming up on the inside support in Pritchard. Couldn't get it away. Now it's from Tolman. The ball back flicked on the inside. Hodgkinson then the ball back away to Cassiano. Back to Reynolds or forward pass. Oh, oh they're going to let him go. No, no, no. no. Got it. It's up. Penalty. Well, there you go. Yep. That's the first time in five seasons I've seen a deliberate throw forward penalised. Yeah, and good on them. It's about time they did made that decision because in the past they just say, no, forward pass will have a scrum here. That was a metre forward. We all yelled it out when it happened, not that we could see it. Uh, but it was looked a forward pass. No, exactly. Well, far away. Well, from what Billy said down the mountains, he said, that looks like a forward pass to me. He screamed at me, he screamed at you. <laughs> did you think it was too, Chuck? Oh, let me say, I'm just checking on JJ at the moment, Ray. Um, I think he's good to go, but let me say this. I don't know much about JJ. this game. This is JJ. JJ. Josh Jackson. Oh, please, okay. leave me alone. Hey, <laughs> can you stop Look. the Welsh accent, please, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> He's from Kentucky. I don't know. Cardiff. I don't know where. I, I, I tell you, I don't know where I am at the moment. I mean, but look, I'm going to talk a bit of serious footy here. Billy Connolly. Yeah, well, okay, let's go. <laughs> that just seems to me, Ray, that the pink side moving the ball around against the bigger blue and white side, who are struggling to come to grips when it's moved out wide. Oh, that, well oh. spotted, Chuck. And now that's uh, Peachy going inside the 20. Thank you, Chuck. Nah, that's okay, Ray. Chuck time. Fulton, our special guest from yeah. WCFMDAB in Kentucky. He's yeah. out here on a study tour. He's work experience, basically, Chuck. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, Ray, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it with you at the moment. I'm just see it. I have time. I'll come up with my summary. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait for that, Chuck. Here's the ball thrown by Penrith out the back. And they're going to come up with the ball, Canterbury. And I don't think the coach will be too happy with what's happened there, Mr. Cleary. They're on the attack 15 metres out. I know it's very hot, and perhaps that's the reason for it, but they just seem to throw the ball around then and throw it away when they should have been mounting some sort of pressure. Yeah, they do lead by 12 nil, four and a half out from half-time, yeah, Penrith. They're, they're not playing... Spark well, they're, they're playing good footy, the Panthers, but they could play a lot better. And saying mm. that the Dogs, they're really struggling. Sam Perrett's probably been their best player. At least he's been, he's been around the ruck. He's been trying to inspire them. That, it's not really working at the moment. We did see a great ball from Cassiano before. Gee, he can play Cassiano. Yeah. Oh, There's that's, a poor play. Well, ball. that should be a scrum. Clemmer's got up. And then Segi Yaro's gave him a little clip under the chin, <laughs> just for fun. And they're going to pack a scrum. And Desi looks disinterested at the moment, as does his assistant, Kelly Egan. Pan I'm told, I can't see them. Panthers 12. Uh, lead the Bulldogs nil. We've got about four minutes to go. And now 23 gone from Ramonda Stadium. Cronulla leading Canberra by 12 points to eight. And Lars Roy tells me full time in the New South Wales Cup. And North Sydney, the Bears have beaten Wenny by 30 to 16. Well done to the Bears. Nice start for them. Fantastic. Uh, they're still yep. with Parramatta. By the way, yeah. there are three more prospects in the Sims, Campbell, Gillard, Jean Pool. The eight-year-old Marley is already wearing size men's shoes, going to be a giant. So Marley's another little fella in the Gene Pool from the Sims, Campbell, Gillard. Is his name Marley Sims, Campbell, Gillard? I think so. <laughs> I think no, he's just a, he's just a he's just a Marley Campbell Gillard. He's not a Sims. They're related. Here's a penalty taken. Ooh, the referee signaled time off. Ben Cummins as I think Moylan took a tap. Now Josh Reynolds is questioning the decision. Bit of a trip here. Oh yeah. Well, you know, Josh has got the propensity to do that. I think you'll find Piggy from time to time. He's got a bit of that in him. Yeah. He? Well, yeah. but the only thing that he escapes here, at the same time he stuck his leg out, he put his hand out. His arm. And up. you yeah. can do that. You can use your leg in a tackle, provided you've got your hand on first. Right. Thirty years ago, it was an automatic send off. Yeah. I, I know. I know that wasn't that wasn't a bad yeah. one. And, and Thurston was a but bit he did do a bad, last night. He did. He did do a bad one last year. And got dealt don't with. send them off for that anymore. No. Well, I can remember Cole Pearce saying, you know, a trip in his time of refereeing back in the 60s and 70s was simply an automatic send-off. It was, it was thought to be a very ordinary act. 
Now, have they got another penalty? Another penalty they have right in front. They're going to go for the jugular here. There's two and a half minutes to go. They're going to take a tap. And here is Seguiaro. Oh, they've juggled the ball and that came back away. And they've got the ball, but they're only a metre out. Oh, number 15, horribly close to scoring Jeremy Latimer. He's up against the oak milk sign at the northern end. Oh, short flat ball from Seguiaro. And again, they're denied defence. I think Cassiano is there again. Very good defence by Cassiano. Uh, now the ball out the back, Wallace. Moylan dances. He just keeps beating plays. He's a freakish footballer, this boy. Dummies again back Ooh. on the side. And he's been knocked base over Apex as he passed it. There's a kick into the in-goal area, and it's palmed dead. So they'll get, for the last two minutes, another six tackles after Perrett palmed it dead. Now, Piggy, you went, ooh! Well, Why I did saw, you go, ooh? Well, I saw Matty Moylan get speared on his head after he passed the ball. I'd like to... If I could, I'd like to see well, to have seen a replay. Well, let me tell you, you will, because the penalty's gone for that mm. incident. I think it was Josh Reynolds again who's it frustrated. Was. It was Josh Reynolds. So it's a penalty from beside the pace with exactly two to go. Take the two. They're going to take the two, you're right. Yeah, they're going to take it, make it 14-0. It's beside the post. So they're going to take the kick. That means we're going to take a break. When you come back from the break, it will be the Panthers right on halftime leading by 14-0. The continuous call team on 2GB is thanks to Holden. Coal Supermarkets, Coates Hire, Shimano, McDonald's, Tire Power and Brighton's Compensation Lawyers. So that goal was kicked by Jamie Sowd, as you would understand. And as a result, it is 14 points to nil, 14-0. Penrith lead the way, and that's right on half time. So they go to the break, 14 points to nil. 14 nil, Penrith lead the way. Now let's have a quick summary from the team, from what they've been able to get from various reports down the line, from Billy and the like. Chuck, Chuck wanted to do a half time summary of what happened. Chuck, see if you can do it for in one accent for the next 30 seconds, if you don't mind. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Chuck, uh, Chuck. Uh, uh, this is Chuck. Chuck, I'm going away. I'm leaving it over to Bozo. Okay, Bozo, are you there? Chuck's gone. Yeah, mate, I'm here. What do you think? Well. I just think, you know, Penrith are playing an up-tempo game against the, the bigger Canterbury side, and, and obviously in these conditions, I mean, those tactics are spot on, Ray, and when Canterbury need to complete their sets, I mean, it, that's just to get back into the game. I, 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 you're right out wide. I think, you know, you know, Williams is causing them all sorts of grief with, with the ball in hand, and, you know, it is causing them problems when they've had pretty pretty reasonable sort of field position, but, um, you know, it's quite simple what Penrith are trying to do, big man, with um, with the Canterbury side defensively, and, and it is working. Oh, they're just trying to run them round. They look, they look metres faster. Got a younger back line. The halves are controlling it beautifully. Sowards kicking game's been good. Wallace the same. And they got the big forward, Seguiaro. He's just a superstar, Seguiaro. He's just causing him untold problems in the middle of the ruck. And they, at the moment, they've got no answer to them. Moylan, when he gets it, looks dynamic. Piggy? Yeah, he does. Look, thing. they all look good. Look, you've mentioned... Matty Moyle and George Jennings, he's been great as well. They just look too fast for the Bulldogs. Every player that's got the ball, they seem to be playing very quick at the ruck. Seguiaro's getting his forwards over the advantage line and playing on the front foot. But uh, the Dogs, I tell you what, it's going to take a big effort if they're to, to even have a chance in this second half of coming back in the game because I think one more try from the Panthers' side and it's uh, and it's good night. Well, I think you're right. When we get to 18-0 or 20-0, it will be good night. I'm just checking for Phil Rothfield's tip in the Battle of the Tipsters in the Sunday Telegraph. Oh, what a shame. Little Busby's tip the Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you tipped? Uh, Penny, Penny Panthers. Penny Panthers yeah. at the foot of the Blue Mountains. Anyway, a lot of things can happen. 14-0 in the modern game isn't insurmountable, but uh, the way they're playing at the moment, Canterbury. And, I mean... <laughs> I think Penrith, I don't go off too early, it's only 40 minutes of football, but I think Penrith, based on their form in 2014, their comeback under Ivan Cleary, I think they really are, you know, among the teams to beat, not the team to beat, but among the teams to beat for season 2015. You know the thing they've got, Ray, they've, they've got very, very mobile players and, mm. and they've got a bit of size about them and they're very, very strong side. Um, but uh, Canterbury certainly aren't out of this, as you blokes have sort of mentioned, yeah. but... I mean, they have got to retain possession, but they have got to control the ruck, and they're not doing that. So, completion's 10 of 15, they've had no ball. Yeah. The other mob, 19 of 23, so they've had eight, eight more sets. Well, that, and they've that, only contained it for 67%, 83%. Just a quick word, Bob, before we go to a break on the news, and we'll come back after the news with our look at the second half. This young bloke, George Jennings, younger brother of Michael, yeah, assessment yeah. on him quickly, what do you think? Oh, well, I mean, when you, when you look at his brother, I mean, he's got the same traits as his brother, and, mm. I mean, his brother's reached all the heights in the game. He's won competitions, he played for Australia, played for New South Wales, and, and played in winning winning sort of test series, and also he won an origin last year. I mean, it's OK to say, yeah, the kid's got the potential, but he's got to reach that potential, and he's got to play consistently to be rated 
where his brother is now. Yeah, but it's a promising future. And a promising oh, it is, right. There's no it. doubt about that. I mean, he's a supreme athlete. OK, we take a break for the news coming up at 5 o'clock in New South Wales, the ACT, 4 o'clock in Queensland. Repeating half-time score, Penrith over Canterbury from the foot of the Blue Mountains at Pepper Stadium by 14 points to nil for Lowe's menswear. And just a reminder, we'll continue not to call the game after the news which comes up at 5 o'clock in a couple of minutes from now. And now on the continuous call team. It's the final countdown. It's time for the final countdown. Thanks to Australia's richest NRL Supercoach fantasy game. Back better than ever. Register and play for free at dailytelegraph.com.au forward slash supercoach. And welcome back. We're the continuous call team. Coming up with the second half of the game that we can't call, but we're bringing you all the news via the Channel 9 Interactive Studio with Chuck Fulton down on the touchline. Bob's long-lost cousin from Kentucky. Uh, Daryl's with me in the pretend broadcast box and in the pretend cherry picker, we've got uh, Mark Piggy Riddell. Now, I didn't do the Blackwoods quiz questions for you. I better do them now. I'd forgotten, actually. Thanks to the Blackwoods organisation, footy quiz back for 2015. Blackwoods trade team brochure out now. Blackwoods.com.au forward slash trade team. The prize is a JBS 69-piece socket set valued at over $130. A great addition to your workshop or shed. Both metric and imperial sizes, so you have to uh, have the right socket. JBS, proven industrial performance. Question two. Which English forward is the new captain of the Canterbury Bulldogs? Which English forward is the new captain of Canterbury? And question three. You've got to have all three. Former Bulldogs hooker Michael Ennis plays his first game for which club tonight? So we make them easy so everyone can win. If you know the answer to all three, you go to the... Uh, prize line 1300 722 1300 and do it now anyone can win as long as you have the answer to all three not just the last two but all three you win the jbs 69p socket set valued at over 130 dollars just a reminder as well one of our great sponsors tire power across australia get the buying power of tire power's big easter sale on now they're a great buy buy three get one free on Toyo Nano Energy 3, Toyo Proxus C100 and Toyo Proxus C100S tyres. And tyre power to enjoy the buying power of Australia's biggest independent tyre retailer. No sign of the players back for the second half, I'm told. Tyre power has big brands like Toyo, Kelly, Kumo, Maxis, Goodyear, Dunlop, Century at lower prices. Whether you want passenger, commercial, performance, four-wheel drive, trailer or even truck tyres, they've got them all at tyre power. Tyre power call 132191 or go to the website tyrepower.com.au Belconnen, Bega, Beresfield, Cowra, Blaney, Dubbo, Glen Innes, Musselbrook, Forbes, Barrel, Lithgow, Toronto, Queenbin, Inverell, Kyma, Grafton, Nowra, Parks, Jindabyne, Tormina, Coffs Harbour, Morrisette on the Central Coast, Tea Gardens, Wickham, Tuncurry, South West Rocks, Young, Narrabri, Tuggeranong, Wagga Wagga and Ulladulla is where you find the tyre power stores, apart from those that are in Sydney, of course, right across uh, the New South Wales listening network. Righty o the players come back for the second half. I'm joined, uh, not in commentary because we can't call the game, but in commenting on the game by Daryl Broman in the pretend broadcast box. Big man, g'day again. Yeah, hi, Ray. They need, they need to start fast here, the Bulldogs. They need to lift it up a level here, otherwise they're going to get beaten or maybe even get smashed by the Panthers. Um, they look, they've looked a bit lethargic to me, the Bulldogs, and really had no answer to what Penrith threw at them, so... Uh, you know, as long as the Panthers come out with the same mindset in the second half as they did in the first half, you'd expect them to go on with this. And, and you'd think they'd win quite easily, given the, they've got a 14-point start at the moment. And Piggy Riddell, of course, once he gets down from the cherry, Piggy won't have far to go up Mulgoa Road to get home. Piggy, can they do it, the dogs? 14-0. Oh, look, Ray, I don't think they can, but if they are going to going to try and win this game, I think they've, they've really got to take some control around the ruck. I think they've been far too slow getting out of the ruck with their big man. I think the Panthers are just playing way too quick for them so far, but they've got to cut their errors out. Silly errors, silly penalties have, have given Penrith their opportunity so far today. Queensland Cup halftime, Central Queensland Burley 10 all, 10 all now, full-time scores. East Tigers over the Northern Pride, 20 points to 12 for Shimano. Tweed heads over Redcliffe by 42-28 and PNG have started the Queensland Cup season with a bang defeating South Logan by 40 points to 18. Canterbury defend the southern end of Pepper Stadium, formerly Penrith Stadium, and the northern end defended by Canterbury, uh, by Penrith rather, who have a lead at 14-0. And our man Chuck Fulton is down on the touchline. Chuck? 
Hey, hey, Ray. Chuck, you know. Chuck, you running out of Chuck, 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 you know what. Look, I've just been into my first rugby league dressing room, Ray, and mamma mia, there's lots to see on a par with any NFL or NBA dressing room, Ray. I had a few selfies too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I had my clothes on. Did you have uh, a selfie stick out uh, as well, Chuck? Did I what, Ray? Yeah, I bet you did, uh, Chuck. You old hey, listen, yeah. listen. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I was talking to Bozo, and Bozo reckons that Canterbury ain't out of this. All they got to do is hold the ball, whatever that is, and just play. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might mean the same in NFL, uh, okay, Chuck. Okay. It means don't drop Thank it. you, Ray. Thank you, Chuck. All the best. That's yeah, Chuck Fulton Chuck. on the side. Well, he's not on the sideline, Chuck. He's a mate of Bay. Well, he's a relation of Bay's. His long last relation from Warrington who's gone to uh, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's English. <laughs> Hence the Welsh uh, accent every now and then. Anyway. Uh, I, had a, I had a McDonald's at half time too, Ray. Yeah, do we love yeah. Macca's. <laughs> Thanks for that, Chuck. <laughs> what about that great thing they've got? You get to have a Big Mac, you get a free what? fries and the drink. Hey, hey, Big Mac, you're talking like me. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you, like, you like America, don't I you? I love going over there. <laughs> By the way, Canterbury... Hell of a place. Yeah, oh, Canterbury got a set of there. six in and then kicked downfield and the ball's come back away. And now in possession. Oh, what an offload. What an offload oh. it was by Bryce Cartwright. And they go on the attack. They're going to score a try. <laughs> Sigi Yaro. I mean, look, I know we can't comment on the replay, but you look at the offload by Bryce Cartwright here. Over the top it was. And all of a sudden, the start that Canterbury didn't want... Well, Piggy said just before half-time they can't afford to let them in again. They lead 18 nil now. Watch this. Uh, I can't see it. Well, here it is. I can, I can see it now on the internet. Ray, you see he's tackling him there? Oh, not, not Tony Williams. Williams. Oh, man. So, you know what? Bryce Cartwright, and I've been rapping him for ages, mm. he is a future superstar. Mm. There's no doubt about that. He, I think he's as good a player as his uncle. John. I think he's as good a player well, as his uncle. he played for Australia. And the, and the bloke he offloaded to is a current superstar. Now, I've got no Seguiaro. doubt James Seguiaro is in the top echelon of hookers in the game at the moment. He is a great player, James Seguiaro. But that ball from Cartwright, he had three big bulldog boys around him. He managed to just lift his arm up, pop the ball down. Seguiaro got it, ran wide, ran into a gap, threw a dummy, and just, mate, he's got amazing pace, Seguiaro. He's yeah, a super player. You know what, what it was? It was just a simple run around. Mm. But it was a run around created by Cartwright, who's a monster of a man, standing in two tackles. And so he takes the ball from Seguiaro at dummy half, first receiver, stands in a tackle, won by Tony Williams. Seguiaro runs around, just a simple run around, and he runs into a gap. And he then he out sprints them, including the outside backs and a run to the line, and he scores in that southeastern corner. And they make it 18-0, and you'd want to be backing Jamie Sauer to kick the goal. I'm glad we're not calling this because it could become very one-sided if we kept calling it. We might even not. We might even stop calling it if we. Well, were, we're calling not calling it. it, but if we were calling it, we nearly have to stop calling it because it's becoming very one-sided today. Do nil, and here he is from the touchline. I'm told, and that's a magnificent kick. He's put it straight between the uprights. They lead by 20 nil. You can't believe it. The game's all over effectively. Three minutes into the second half, I'm glad we're not calling it uh, because it must be really boring to call a game at 20 nil with you know 38 minutes to go. Yeah, well we, we have been there before, of course. Yeah, we said said before if they if they do happen to score first here, I mean this this could well you know it's it's not easy to say this, but yeah, this could be 50. Uh, they at the moment are just running rampant. These young blokes are a metres faster than the Bulldogs players, and to me. This could be a big, big score. By the way, our winner of the Blackwoods quiz, the answers Pat Richards, James Graham and Cronulla. Jason from Gracemere, 4BC winner straight up. 4BC winner straight up. Gracemere's in Brisbane. Great work. Gracemere, so, absolutely. JBS 69-piece socket set valued at 130 okay. bucks is coming the way of Jason from Gracemere. You know, one of the things about it, hmm. you know the sides have been thumped this weekend. Brisbane. Yes. Canterbury getting thumped at the moment. Manly. Manly. I'm a word of North caution to all those tipsters. Hmm. All those tipsters. Throw the first round form out the window. Absolutely. Throw it out the window when you're assessing next week. You're going through what's happening. And well, there's still two games to come, of course. Throw the first weekend form out the window because it could all change. Oh, absolutely. I remember last year, I, mm. actually had, I think I tipped the Bulldogs to win the comp early last year and they got smashed by Brisbane in the first round. And mm. They looked very pedestrian. You know, if you're a yeah. Bulldog supporter... You know, you wouldn't throw, don't don't give up hope. It's one game into the round, and they've got a big, solid pack of forwards. But they are getting taught a lesson here today. The, the Panthers are, are teaching them a lesson in pace and also enthusiasm. I've got to say that they're way more enthusiastic than them. Don't forget the Sharks come up with Canberra at six thirty, five thirty in Queensland on Fox. Then tomorrow night on Fox and George Illawarra and Melbourne. But round two, Friday night, 
the game live in the Queensland that I'll call on Channel 9 is the Sharks and the Broncos from down there at Ramondas. I look forward to seeing it there, Daryl. Will we be calling that one? No, you won't. You. I'll look forward to seeing Bev anyway. Okay. Bulldogs and Eels at ANZ. That's the one you'll be calling right. uh, with Thirsty. Uh, on Saturday, 4.30, Thirsty's catching the train to lift, going walking to Bathurst for the game between the Panthers and the Titans. And then Manly play the Storm at Brookie. And, and you know, it's not beyond the realms of possibility the Storm could be 0-2 if Manly are able to give it to them. Um, then we've chance got... that Manly could be 0-2 as well. Oh, of course there is. Cowboys and Knights. That's from, as we mentioned earlier, up there in Townsville. Rabbitohs and Roosters. What a game that's going to be. That's the game we can't call on Sunday afternoon from we're the Interactive call Studio. That next we week. won't be calling we're that, just like we're not calling this one, this one. No. With, Chuck, with Chuck Fulton, of course. And then the Raiders and the Warriors is a 6.30 game, and that's from Canberra. And then on 7 o'clock on Monday night, West Tigers and Dragons comes your way from Campbelltown. Now, here's their first chance to score some points here as the big Frankie Pritchard is put down on the tackle here for Canterbury. In the game, we're not calling. Hodkinson sends it back to Reynolds. Reynolds drift across field. Little kick. Oh, gee, that's a bad kick. Was going nowhere. It's tidied up by Soward. Um, and Soward's grabbed by the jumper by Clemmer and driven back about five metres close to his own line. But it was it was a nothing kick. I mean, it was for no one. He, he kicked it out of just... I, it's the sort of kick you see from teams when they're down 20-0. That's well, what you see. He was being harassed by a, by a Panthers player, and really mm. it was a rush kick. I don't even know if it was the last tackle, but anyway, he put it in there. The Panthers have now lost the ball, so this is getting a little bit scrappy here yeah. early in the second half. I've got an idea for the non-call we have. Yeah. You think, would Bozo have relations all around the world? Do you think we could get a different relation, say a Scandinavian relation of Bozo's to get on the side? Oh, Fritz Fulton. Fritz Fulton. The German. Hey, yes. Ich bin Fritz. <laughs> Is that this possible? Is I think we'll steer away from Germans. Okay. <laughs> well, what about a... What about a Brazilian? Oh, oh, not for me. <laughs> no, no, I'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with you on a lot of things, Reeve, but not that. I tell you what I'm looking to not calling next week, uh, the Rabbitohs and the Roosters, because uh, that's going to be a great game. I'm looking forward to not calling that. Well, look, I, I think Big's got a point here, eh? Mm. I, I think I might have to source my relations overseas and just see what I can come up with. Well, let's but hope you don't find you. too many relations overseas, Bob. <laughs> but, Ray, I've got one problem. Yeah. My visa runs out on Thursday. Um, well, that's, that's, that's good. Right. You go well, get that, the other one back. Yeah, yeah that's, a fa that's good for us. The all gone, yeah. Chuck. We'll get one of your relatives. Get Larry time. Fulton from England. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> Here's the ball along the ground. Mm -hmm. Half volleyed now. Picked up and uh, Perrett towards the goal line for Canterbury. In the game, we're not calling, but he's tackled there by George Jennings and also Jamal Lidris, and it's a forward pass. So, uh, mistake up. Look, I'm not going to blame them. It's the first round of the season. It's really hot out there at Penrith, according to our man, Billy McGee. So let's not blame them. It's really, oh. really hot. But I'll tell you what we can do. Take a break on the continuous call. 20 points to nil to Penrith. The final countdown with the continuous call team, thanks to Australia's richest NRL Supercoach fantasy game at dailytelegraph.com.au forward slash supercoach. Welcome back. No change in score. Seesawing uh, the game from one end to the other at uh, Pepper Stadium, formerly Penrith Stadium. Now, Chuck uh, Fulton is our special guest from Kentucky, who's out here on a study tour, uh, staying with Bob and Ann. But he's come up with a revolutionary idea. Mm. He's, he's watched the game in soaring temperatures out there in the western part of Sydney. Chuck, what have you got to contribute? Well, Ray, I, I just see this is a very hot day, and hang on, there's some guy here making a break. <laughs> His name's James Seguiaro, <laughs> uh, Chuck. <laughs> And that guy was brought down, yeah, Chuck. Sorry about, about that. No, that's okay, yeah, Chuck. You're not yeah. allowed to call it oh, anyway, just, Chuck. I can see Here's the ball. Mylan, he, uh, well, it sends it back on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> he brought down the crunching tackle. Soward goes to acting half. Sends the ball away on the outside to Peachy. Wallace turns it back on the inside now. Comes back to Peachy. Peachy drifts across field. Takes the tackle. Oh, he's lost the ball, Peachy. Ooh. No, he's put down by big Tony Williams. He's a useless big thing. He plays the ball. 15 metres out from the goal line now. Segiaro goes to Soward, left footed kick from Soward coming down now for the wing three quarter he dances through the tackle, they're going to score a try, it's a TRI Benny try. Elias, it's try. a try, try, try well, what am I, Benny Elias? <laughs> that was with T. That was WZ, big man. Well, I'm called him DWZ. DWZ. The old DWZ. DWZ. I understand they use that here to crank a few things up when the old <laughs> machine's not working properly. Anyway, scored in the corner. This is going to be a cakewalk. In fact, they'll be having Krispy Kreme shortly. They'll be celebrating with a few... Donuts. What do they call them over there in the States? Uh, hot dogs. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Let's go to our new friend up in the cherry picker, Grunter. Hey, Grunter. <laughs> he's Grunter. He's Grunter Riddle. <laughs> Grunter Riddle's up he's... there. <laughs> Grunter's collapsed. Look. He's from, he's from hog catchers. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like one of the women. <laughs> Grunter's, Grunter's taking his headset. <laughs> come on, Grunter. Hey, Grunter, get a handle on yourself, son. Grunter, oh. come on, join the party. On a serious note. Hell of a party. Now, when D, DWZ scored, <laughs> the defence, the winger had him tackled, uh. and he just broke clear of the tackle. It was 24-0 Panthers leading the way. Can someone get Phil Rothfield on the line? He just tipped another loser. <laughs> <laughs> it's his first one for the year. I don't care. Mm. He was wrapping himself today. Look oh. at Joey. Hey. Not that I can see him. Yeah. Anyway, I've got to say that Grunt, Grunter Riddle wasn't too good there when we needed him. He went to water. Sorry, Grunter. Ray. I'm no, back now. Yeah. I'm back now. <laughs> he fell out of the cherry picker, Grunter. <laughs> Here's Have you kick. been called Grunter before? <laughs> I think he has. I think we're delving into Grunter's past. <laughs> oh, oh, he's, oh, Grunter's, he's, Grunter. he's losing. He's blowing stuff out of his nose. Listen, hang on a sec. Jamie South missed the kick, eh? So it says 24-0. Oh, dear, I'm glad we're not calling it because there's about 28 minutes to go. <laughs> and it's uh. 24 blot. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway. <laughs> what? What about DWZ? I can't believe that. How he, he fed him straight over the top of Curtis Rayner. Curtis Rayner had a hand on him and, and was going to make a tackle. Then DWZ just went bang, crash, well yeah, that was That's what he's going to be known as in the future. DWZ, DWZ. I think that's easier. Like DWZ. DCE up against we better, DWZ. We better ring Gus and tell him that it's DWZ. Well, look, he just hand. took the ball forward. RCG. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I've got an email about Regan Campbell-Gillard from uh, someone that knows his family particularly well and said there's plenty out here apart from Regan uh, around Mount Druitt. There's Marley, Caleb and Hendricks and they're all part of the one family and are closely related to uh, the Sims family as, uh, as Piggy mentioned a bit earlier. So it's 24-0 here. Panthers leading the way over Canterbury. I've got some updates and other scores that I should uh, give you as well. Will you not be calling the Canberra Cronulla game in the same way not calling this one? Uh, Robert, yes. No, we won't be calling that one in any capacity. We'll be gone. Uh, could you please adjust the webcam? I can't see Chuck. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's part of our ploy, uh, Virginia. Chuck's hidden. Uh, He's a hidden Chuck. You want to see Grunner? <laughs> uh, Peter says, I just tuned in. What's the game that you're not calling? Well, it's uh, the Panthers leading here by 24-0. The Seguiaro is not tackled, just like we're not calling. He's had the ball stripped in a one-on-one -on -one tackle. And the ball's come back to Canterbury. Yeah, I thought it was a bit sloppy there. I thought he was tackled and they let it go. Uh, excellent work, says Nick. Extremely entertaining, especially from Chuck. Good stuff. Holden Cup, I mentioned earlier. Corrala lead the Canberra Raiders in the second half by 16-14. Rothfield says, you after me. Yes, tell him I'm after him because I want to just talk to him about tipping Canterbury <laughs> against Penrith mainly. But we won't talk to him. We'll get him next week and square up the ledger. Anyway, back we go to the game we're not calling here. It's Tony it? Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Tackled by Jamie Soward. Oh. Actually, I've got to, well, actually, he's got a penalty for his side here. He lost mm. the ball and Soward must have stripped him. Well, hang Soward's on. defense today has been It was a one-on-one -on -one tackle, so he must have stripped it after the tackle was completed there. Let's have a look. Yeah. What he did, he got up and tried to mark and went in the front. So it was more uh, an illegality in the play the ball as opposed to stripping a one-on-one -on -one tackle. But anyway, that's what happened there. So it's 24-0. And the penalty count, Panthers 8-5. 24-0 to the Panthers for those men who were over the Bulldogs. Geez, they'd be wanting just one try. You wouldn't think they could run them down well, for here, would you? I know there's a long way to go. There's still 24 to go, but you wouldn't think they could run them down, Well, surely. they look pedestrian compared to the, to the Panthers. The Panthers. Sa Sowell's defence today has been exceptional out wide. Yeah, he's Given away a, a couple run. of penalties, though, but he's... That was yeah. attack. He sort of bulldog Josh Reynolds into the ground then. Yeah. Eastwood throwing dummies. But they're on the attack. They're only 15 metres out, Darren. Yeah, and, they need to score. I mean, without, they've clearly got to score in this set. They might just do it here. James Graham, it's way on the outside to Morris. Now, that is the first time, not that I'm calling the game, but I can remember mentioning his name, Josh Morris, on this left-hand side. First time I can remember it. Uh, the fullback, Brett, was at acting half. Graham, and they're back to the ground. So the Panthers are doing well in really difficult conditions. It's been very hot, apparently, all that afternoon. That was Pritchard. Now the ball back away to Morris again. He's put down the tackle. And I think it's Brett trying to get clear of the tackle. He can't quite get his hands free. And he might have lost it. You know, it's a changeover, six tackle. 
I mean, that's why he's trying desperately to get rid of it, the fullback, because he knew it was the last tackle. I'm, I'm sorry, it was a centre. Josh Morris, not Brett Morris, the centre, was on the left-hand side, his twin. Anyway, so now we've got the wing three-quarter. DWZ bringing it out, and hasn't he had a game? And Tyrone Peachy as well, very, very good performance by him. So yeah. repeating the score, 24-0. Have you recomposed yourself up there, Ray? Yeah, I'm all good now, Ray. Okay. Brother. I, I got, I, I got a tip that from an email here that there's a, a reason why you laugh. Is that the name that's been subjected? You've been subjected to in the past. What's Grunt? that, Grunter? No, I don't know. He's written that. You appear to have lost it when we called you Grunter. No, yeah, you seem to, you seem to have just gone to completely the water. I found it, found it amusing, Ray. All right. I believe, and without knowing, I think there's some history <laughs> yes. with Grunter Riddell. I think. Well, particularly when there was a snort halfway yeah. through it. <laughs> there's a bit of history there. It's a good and game, this one. Oh yeah, yeah. Cambers are playing well. Cronulla over Canberra, 22-20 at Ramonda Stadium. That's 56 gone in the Holden Cup. Um, great to hear the great Roy Handley finally not calling the football. Thanks very much, Nathan, in Denman. It's uh, great to be the great Roy Handley not calling the football. Anyway, uh, it'd be shocking to have to call this game because it's really one-sided. Uh, Sam Perrett brought the ball forward for Canterbury now. 24-0, uh, the Panthers lead the way over the Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs still looking for their first points of the afternoon. And just watching the boys uh, being treated for, not heat stress, but certainly very hot conditions from the Penrith bench with ice packs being draped all over them when they get to the bench. Graham out the back. Then uh, Reynolds inside past Jackson. Held on the tackle. You know Black what? Eye, that is. They always look better when he's on the field, James Graham. I, I know he's a front row, but I reckon he's got a big enough engine to leave him out there. Oh, hey. What about that? There was a kick by Reynolds, I think, from memory. And it was a beauty. Was that Moylan picking the Yeah, yeah. Moylan, Matty Moylan, yeah. yeah. Threw himself at the ball, and that he, he got to the ball. He was collect, collected by Josh Reynolds, and then just off they went. Now, I tell you, who's a player. Sucked in, Morris. Big, big and big. <laughs> what did you say there, <laughs> That was Granta. <laughs> sucked, sucked in, in Morris. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> sucked in, Morris. We've got to look where the sound effects mic is for this game. <laughs> Next time, be very careful with it. Sound that. like zero, but he wouldn't be there, would he? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Tyrone Peachy. Yeah. Player. Oh, he's, mm. I think he's, how the Sharks let him go, I don't know. He's he's just a fantastic player. Mm. So it's Cartwright. They, as I've said before, they've got the best young players, I think, in the game. Uh, there's been a kick downfield here by, uh, the, uh, by the Panthers. Here's this replay of this take by Moylan. Oh, what about that? Oh, folly. Oh. He took it on a half volley, and then Reynolds came up with a tackle. Had he collected him with the swinging arm mm. while he was on the ground, he would have been on report and missing three or four weeks. He's very lucky that the collision uh, with Matty Moylan resulted in not well, too he's, much. He's already on report. He's been on report for a trip. Yeah, that's right, he was. Oh, I don't think that, that one was hands and legs together. I don't think he's got a problem there. Now, this ball has hit the corner pace, so that would mean it's a option restart the 20 minutes. I think they're line. just seeing, I think it hit the, hit the touch line oh, first. before it hit the corner oh, pace. So this is a. Well spotted, big. Well spotted. Kick. So. They're looking at it. Well, it it's the same result. You say, well, no, it's a 10 metre scrum. 10 metre scrum. That's a great yeah, right. option yeah. restart. Sorry, Bob, can you get Chuck back? He knows a bit Chuck. more about yeah. the game. <laughs> there, Ray. Chuck, when, you when, know, Ray, yeah. I, I'm a bit of a storyteller, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you probably don't know much about me, but, um, you know, I was a bank teller once in <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what, what happened, Chuck? Was, well... I was involved in this bank robbery, and what do you reckon the robber said to me? What did he say? He said, stick him up, Chuck. <laughs> What's so funny about that? <laughs> <laughs> He's lost it. This bank is immortal. He's an immortal. He's an immortal. Stick him up, Chuck. Oh, here's the ball to Graham. They're looking for their first try. Eastwood flings it out the back straight to Penrith. Oh, everything they've done, Canterbury, this afternoon has come up. Stick him up, Chuck. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. He I wrote that. I don't Chuck oh, wrote that down. <laughs> no, he, Chuck's been thinking about that for ten minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> the best day lived from a fair dad lived. Gee, what about your grandkids? Oh, oh grandpa, what are you doing? What are you doing, Dad? What are you doing? We got Christy tissue be, for Chuck. Oh, Christy, if you say the kids, oh, look, Poppy's not oh. well like me. <laughs> We're Pop not well. Let's just let's oh, turn it off. Oh, i got to tell you, Chuck's going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sowers kicked from just outside the 40 in the meantime for Penrith. <laughs> uh, 
he got, well, that's a beautiful way that's to a kick. Brilliant. It's gone all the way back to the in goal, almost at their dead ball. And the winger, Curtis Rain, has got to run it out. And uh, they'll play it just outside the 10 now. It went from one Morris to the other Morris, and he's going to unload it back away to Curtis Rayner again. They're playing hot potato with it, as they have to. And now, straight through centre field goes Sam Perrett. Uh, there's about 18 minutes to go, and they're down by 24 nil. Is that Segiaro on Reynolds? No, I don't think so. I think it might have been in the back row. It might have got him. Mm. They're anyway, saying it was high, but they... Tyrone Peachy it wasn't was. that bad. He it's ran a good dive. Reynolds can't hit the deck. <laughs> good Peachy's, dive. He slapped him around oh. the throat. <laughs> Reynolds has gone down like he's been hit by an exorcist yeah, missile. Segiaro was the second man in, but he's he's got up quickly to his credit once he got the penalty. Uh, he did slap him across the chops. It was a deserved penalty, but no further action. Um... Moylan might need to cut cutting his hair twice a week. Yeah, yeah, says uh, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Here's Canterbury with it now. Down 24-0 with about 17 to go out at Pepper Stadium at Penrith. Graham out the back and goes Reynolds. Palms it away on the outside of Jackson. They've got numbers. They get oh. it out wide. They're not going to come back for the forward. Perrett's got Soward coming at him. Good. Jeez, he's tackled. Well, well you've, Soward. You've been very spot yeah. on about him. Absolutely. He, be bull great. he bulldogged him into the ground about two metres out from the line there. Now they're going to go through Jackson trying to... He's going to be put into touch. Soward was offside. He was never onside, Soward. Surely it's a penalty, but no, it's not. And Soward was lying where he made the tackle. He ran from dummy up, ran straight into Soward. It never retreated. And Jackson was trying to get the penalty yeah. or a try. And he didn't get rewarded because he ran straight at Soward. We're going to take a break on the continuous call. The final countdown with the continuous call team. Thanks to Australia's richest NRL Supercoach fantasy game at dailytelegraph.com.au forward slash supercoach. By the way, the official crowd out there at Pepper Stadium is a beauty. 18,814 on a very hot Sunday. Now, there's a penalty going against one of the Morris boys there, Josh Morris, for taking out uh, DWZ as he was coming through after the ball. So that means they're going to kick backwards and come in from there to take the restart. And they're looking for yet another try here. Well, they think, lead 24-0, Penrith. You'd think they'd score here. I mean, they're a pretty dispirited bunch here, the Bulldogs. They've yeah. thrown their best at them in the last 10 minutes or so. They've had a bit of ball, the Bulldogs, the last 10 minutes, but they haven't been able to score. You want to be on Penrith to put some points on the board here. Well, it's 13 to go. Not that we can call the game because we're watching it on the nine coverage. Sigayaro dummies across field from what they hear from Ray Warren. Then the ball out the back. Oh, beautiful oh. skills. Oh. Then a flick out the back. Gee, that was good. The pass may well have travelled forward, but the referee is going to uh, call it back for the forward pass. It was a flick on. I mean, they're 24 nil up. They're going to try things late in the game. There's only about 12 and a bit to go. And they flicked it out the back with Gay Ban. And here it is again, watching the Channel 9 replay. And then it was Moylan who flicked it over the top of Idris's head. The ball's travelled into the arms of the winger uh, on the other side of the field. That's George Jennings. And they've deemed that the flick out the back by young Moylan was forward. And I think they're right. Oh, big news. Tony Williams is coming back. Yes, he is. Friday night, you're going to be there with Thirsty Morrow, the Bulldogs and the Eels from ANZ. The other game, game, Sharks and Broncos. Bulldogs, you're, sure, you're going to know you're doing the Sharks and yeah, Broncos. Yeah, I'm doing that back in the Queensland. I mean, clearly, depending on the result, well, it's going to be a big game either way, whatever that result is. But, I mean, the Bulldogs up against the Eels, they want to be on their game, the Bulldogs, because the Eels were pretty good the other night. Yeah, they're always good games, they aren't are, they? No absolutely. matter what happens, where they are on the ladder or anything, Bulldogs, yeah. Eels, crackers. I see Trent Barrett and David Fairley in the coach's box there with uh, Ivan Cleary. They'd be delighted at their first. Now, Greg Eastwood's coming off and going to the touchline. He's got uh, blood. Now, the game we can't call next Sunday because there's no 2 o'clock game that we can't call mm. is the Rabbitohs and the Roosters. Mm. And that'll be a hell of a game. It'll be a great game not to call. I yeah, it'll be a great not game to not to call. I can't wait not to call it. <laughs> 3 o'clock next Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock in Queensland. Or rather, 4 o'clock, I should say, next Sunday afternoon. Anyway, they have the ball now, Canterbury, after that uh, forward pass went against them. Oh! Segiaro <laughs> into Graham. I think Segiaro, he might have been trying a bit of a get square there. I think Segiaro, he copped something around the throat prior to that, about a minute or so back. He's been penalised. What, what, what's he penalised him well, for? James, well, he's, uh, he's probably shoulder been charge. Off, offside, I would have thought. I don't know. Let's have a look here. No, yeah, shoulder yeah, charge. no arm. That's probably what it shoulder is. Shoulder charge it was. But James Graham got up and threw the ball. I think it hit Sam McKendry. He threw it at the wrong bloke. How tough is Segiaro? 
Pete. I mean, how tough is he? Well, the other bloke's pretty tough too. James I know. Rowe. There's no yeah. doubt about that, but he's a much smaller man. And yeah. it's a shoulder charge. It was just a get square. Has he had a rest this afternoon? Said, yeah, I don't think you've no, seen no, him off the No, there's been no other dummy half. He doesn't no. need to. Uh, you know, this is, I don't think they need to rest hookers. You know, I know they're involved in everything, but most of them are 80-minute players. You know, look what happened to Isaac. Isaac Luke, years and a few years ago, with Johnny Lang was coaching South. He used to give him a break all the time. They didn't need to. He's, he's an elite player, so Seguiaro. They don't need breaks. Uh, he wasn't put on report for that. It wasn't one of your classic shoulder charges. There's a little bit of arm involved, but not much, um, which may have saved him. Jamal Lidrush has just made a tackle. So we're going towards the last 10 minutes of the game, and they're looking for their first try. They got the ball out wide, and it came back to the wing three quarter. Perrot, who's put down about five out from the goal line by Jamal Lidrush. Canterbury trailing 24-0. 24-0 the score uh, as we go inside the final 11 minutes. Here's Williams. Pass it, mate. Give it to someone. Takes the tackle of uh, three defenders and will play it about 11 metres out from the goal line. Graham. Oh, Good beautiful call. ball. Went straight back away to Tim Brown, who's just on the field. They're going to score their first try. The referee points to the spot. 24 points to four. Kick to come. And by the time they get back to restart play, they'll be inside 10 minutes to go in the game. Penrith have it won. Beautiful ball there, James Graham. He attracted three of them. Three of them came to him because one of them was Seguiaro. The other one on the outside came into him was uh, Sam McKendry. And there's one on the inside. Tim Brown will never score a try as easy as that again in his life. Untouched. All he had to do was catch the ball, put it down. He did that. Well, I wouldn't say they're back in the game, but I mean, based on what I've seen for the last 10 minutes or so, they're certainly going to throw the ball about when they get it here, the Bulldogs, and they're going to try and claw their way back into it. Well done, thank you. By the way, Queensland Cup uh, scores coming through. 15 remaining. Central Queensland over Burley at Brown Park by 20 points to 14. Holden Cup, I'm told there. Cronulla League Canberra by 28 points to 26. And there's about 13 to go in that game at Ramonda Stadium. We're the continuous call team. The final countdown with the continuous call team. Thanks to Australia's richest NRL Supercoach fantasy game at dailytelegraph.com.au forward slash supercoach. From the kickoff, Canterbury have carted the ball 90 metres, then got a penalty on the fifth tackle. So they go straight on the attack again. They're going to score. Tim Brown looking for number two. Short millimetres short of the goal line, I'm told. So he'll play it. The score is 24-6. The kicker goal successful from Hodkinson, as you would expect. They get the ball out wide onto the chest of the winger. He's going to score, Curtis Rona. So with about eight and a half to go, it's going to be 24 points to 10. 24-12 he kicks the goal. But I think time will be heavily weighing on the Panthers' side. They've stopped playing football. They have. There's no doubt they put the cue in the rack here, the Panthers. The, the Bulldogs are now starting to play a bit of jungle ball. They're just throwing the ball anywhere. It was a beautiful ball from the halfback. Hodkinson, I think it was, out to Rona. Very similar to the try that we saw George Jennings score from when it was the 5-8 Sow would throw a ball over the top. Well, Rona scored. If he kicks this, Trent Hodkinson... Up, I still think there's points in the dogs. He's just throwing it about and they're playing with a little bit of freedom here. And the Panthers have stopped playing. That's the worry for the Panthers. Well, they've got to score two converted drives in seven minutes, which is not beyond the question. And even then, they only force extra time. Now, Hodkinson, who's prodigious, has kicked the goal. So the Panthers lead 24-12. Piggy Riddell has not clocked off. He's still in the pretend cherry picker at the end of the ground. Well, can they level up at least, maybe? No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think... I think the clock's going to beat the Bulldogs. Look, uh, they're obviously throwing the ball around late in this game, trying to get some some consolation points. But I think the Panthers, they'll take their time. And uh, I think they'll see this one out. I think, I think they've been too strong today, as we see, or as we don't see, Michael Leisha leave the field. I'm not sure who will play hooker for the Dogs. Um, I, I think I saw earlier Josh Jackson Josh go Jackson. there. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw earlier when he came off Leisha in the first half, Jackson went there. He's not the best dummy half, but he's the best they've got. Now, that ball goes back to the goal line. Leash, not there, I mean, it's taken by Morris and given to Graham. And Graham's met by three defenders, I'm told, and will play the ball. So it's 24 points to 12 the Panthers over the Bulldogs now. And they're put down in the tackle just outside the 20. Um, Sam McKendry being spoken to my medical staff. Sam Cassiano put down. Sika Manu's back out now. They go from acting half through Reynolds. They were all offside. They should have been penalised there. 
And back it comes to Graham, who's put down by Sikamanu. And as a result, 10 metres short of halfway. Yeah, someone's got a loud voice next to our sound effects mic there. Cassiano with the ball now, tries to one later back. Good second phase play back to Morris. Morris is through, got the ball back away. Pritchard's into the clear. Morris in support, that's Josh. Through the dummy, still going. Good defence, Moylan got him. Five out from the goal line. I'm told down the line they're 10 metres out. They've thrown the ball back away. The referee has called them back. And I think you'll find they've called them back for a forward pass way back when. That would have been the pass away from Morris to Pritchard. Jeez, it was lying ball. I, I, may have, I thought at the time it may have gone forward a little well, bit. But, gee, I've seen them two, let go two before. Things. It floated forward, but I'm I'm determining off Josh Morris, off Brett Morris's hand, the fullback. I reckon it was propelled forward, so I'm I'm with them. I didn't know. Here it is again on replay. Yeah, off his hand, it's travelled forward. It can travel forward in the air, but not be thrown forward by the hand. I'm prepared to go with that one. That is basically the ball game because there's six to go, and it's a Penrith loose and feed ten short of halfway. Desi was getting a little bit excited for him. He moved his hand from one side to the other and then sat back down again. That's about as excited as Desi gets. So the ball will go into the scrum. Billy, get that bloke to be quiet in front of your broadcast box with you, the loud voice, tell him to watch the game and just shut up a bit. We don't need commentary on it. We're exactly. Non we're we're non-commentating. We don't know the bloke telling us what's going on there. Just telling him to watch the game. He's obviously a Penrith supporter, waxing lyrical with his mate. Anyway, 42 metres out from the Canterbury line. The ball back away, and I think you'll find he's back out there, the big front row of Brent Kite. And they need him to steady the ship, and he does. They're six minutes away from victory. Make it five minutes, actually, because it's about to tick over to exactly five. So you'd imagine that'll be the game. The Panthers will eclipse the Bulldogs here. And we'll take a couple more breaks up to the news at six o'clock, and you'll resume normal programming. And here's, uh, right. what about him? Then he flicked it out the back to Moylan. The Mo oh, there's an intercept by Moylan. It's been thrown away to Perrett. Perrett's come up with the ball, so he invites them back in, but time's going to beat them. We've got, I think, Josh Reynolds down in back play with Cramp. He's being attended to by a trainer for Canterbury. But, yes, we've only got um, four minutes and 40 seconds to go now as they go from acting half through Perrett again. He's put down by the tackle of Jamal Idris as Josh Reynolds is still being worked on for Cramp. And they'll play the ball about 31 metres out from the goal line. And again, from acting half they go. That's his third consecutive run, Perrett, and the third consecutive tackle from Jamal Idris so in this set of six. And they kick from just outside the 40, the way I look at it. It's gone straight to Moylan, who made it. Is it Moylan? No, in fact, it's a winger who circled around, and I think you'll find it is DWZ. DWZ got absolutely hammered from the halfback uh, Hodkinson there. They're going to hang on here, Penrith, but I don't know if the coach will be all that happy with what he's seen the last 20 minutes from them. There's no doubt. They put the cue in the rack here. They're, they're just doing run, one out running now. The defensively, they haven't been good. Peachy almost goes through there. Um, and the Bulldogs, seriously, they're one try away from really making this a contest. Australia, by the way, four for 332 against Sri Lanka. Glenn Maxwell's on 101. Shane Watson, 52. Both not out. That's against Sri Lanka. And there's still four overs to go. Here they are down the touchline. As Soward comes at uh, Reynolds, uh, Morris, I should say, breaks away. He has one more crack at him. He got up and went again. He's going to score beside the post. In fact, under the post. And, uh-oh, that makes it 24-18 with the kick. And there'll be about two minutes to go. He's going to have a look. He's going to have a look. Ben Cummins is going to have a look. He's given a try, but he wants them to have a look at what happened. Whether, in fact, the tackle, I think, by Jamie Sow was completed. Now, all of a sudden, that errant pass from Matt Moylan has given the Bulldogs the chance. It'll be 24-16. I can't see too much wrong with it. Here it is. Oh, they're seeing if it's a strip. No, it's just a tackle by Lafay. Yeah, no, tackle by Lafay. Nothing wrong with that. It's on the ground, picked up by the man with cramp, Josh Reynolds. Now, what are they saying? Was Reynolds offside? No, they're happy with it. That's going back to the put-down. The put-down's OK, I'm sure. Yeah, that'll be a try. Well, 24-18 with about two to go. Well, there's time for the Bulldogs. They've, they've whacked on three tries, really, in about the last eight minutes. They've scored three tries. The Panthers have stopped playing, and there is definite hope here for the, for the Bulldogs. It's, at the clock is now saying 76-43. So by the time they kick off, because they, they stop the clock yeah. once he kicks the goal, they're going to still have three minutes to go. They're quite capable of, of tying this game up. OK, going to stop the clock at 76-56. OK, so there's three minutes and four seconds to go. Three minutes and four seconds. Now, say, Jamie South had a shot on uh, 
Brett Morris. He missed him, then he came again. He put him down but didn't hold him, so he got up and went again. Now I've got an update. I, I told you the cricket, four for 332 against Sri Lanka with the SCG with four overs still to go. She's. I wish we'd call this. It's so tight with the last three minutes to go. Glenn Mackerel's on 101. Shane Watson, 52. Four overs to go. Australia, four for 332. So everyone on their edge of their seats, including Chuck, Piggy, Ray and Darrell. 26-18, and there's the kick from Soward. It's going way back to the goal line, and you watch them throw it about here as it comes back away. And they get it straight away on the outside of Morris. He's down the touchline. This would be the centre three-quarter. Josh, who's put down in the tackle, they threw it straight away. It was a set ploy and well worked out. It came from Pritchard to him, and now with about two minutes and 30 seconds to go, uh, we've got Morris down. He can't get up and play the ball. The referee has signaled time off. Two minutes, 45 to go. And on the first tackle, they're 40 metres out. Now, you could see what they did. The ball was taken forward from the fullback, given to Pritchard, I think, who immediately spun the ball out. And from a running start, this young man, Morris, has steamed onto the ball, and he's been injured. He went to get up. He wasn't held, and Jamie Soud came in to complete the tackle. Nothing underwater there. No, nothing illegal there. He's hurt his ankle at the moment. They're looking at his ankle, but he's up on his feet. Yeah, they're only 30-odd metres out here. <laughs> this is really alarm bells ringing for Penrith here because they've got all the momentum. If they do happen to score and convert and go to extra time, they've got all the momentum here, the dog. So here they are. And the ball comes out the back again to Williams. Williams to Lafay. Lafay pushed away from Soward. Tried to get away from Tyrone Peachy, but Jamal Idris is over the top. Now watching the clock, there's two minutes and 30 seconds to go. Perrett for Canterbury two minutes and 15 seconds to go that's the fourth tackle the next is the fifth obviously this is Graham turns it away out the back turns it back on the inside Pritchard this will be the fifth tackle they've got a kick and hope from 12 metres out Canterbury Hodkinson little kick if they defuse the bomb they get away with it they've gone up for it came back to Moylan Moylan's going to run the ball back into the field of play but it's a knock on it's a knock on so it'll be a scrum and here is another opportunity for Canterbury with one minute and 45 seconds to go. Canterbury packed the scrum to get time off. Well, no, they haven't. Well, he's called time off. He's, they must have got there and packed it. But now, this, is a, this is a vital ruling here from Penrith. Yeah, it came onto his head and then went forward. Yeah, it's I'll tell you what penalty. it is. Uh, Moylan tapped, mm. or rather I should say, the halfback, Wallace tapped the back in an offside position. Yeah, should have been, been a penalty. penalty. You're right about that. In saying that... I think a scrum is, is okay for them. They've got a lot of mm. ground to play with here. They're only 10 metres out from the line. Penrith are going to keep them out for one set of six. If they can do that, they win this game. If they don't, they've got to hope if they well, do Darryl, score, they score out wide. We've got a big problem. We're not calling this game. We're off air in about seven minutes, so we go for Golden Point. So we can't call the Golden Point. Mm. I suppose we could. No, I don't <laughs> Pretend to call the Golden Point. I want to go home. I beg your pardon. No, I don't want, I want to go home. What about commitment <laughs> of the team? Oh, yeah, good point. Here's the ball, Morris, Graham standing out of the scrum, put down, so it's 24-18 Panthers over the Bulldogs, a converted try obviously levels up, a 24 all goes to Golden Point. Here's Reynolds again, they'll want to score the ball close to the post. Williams, can he save the day? No, put down the tackle, five out from the goal line. Dear, oh dear, oh dear, they led 24-0, it's 24-18, three answered, unanswered, converted tries. Now the runaround, Hodkinson, back it came away again, put down the, no, back to Hodkinson. Hodkinson, bounced away, held on the tackle, 11 metres out from the Penrith goal line on being told down the line by Billy McGee on the Channel 9 coverage, we're not there. Here's the ball away, Josh Reynolds steps and goes. That'll be the fourth tackle, they're six away from the goal line, there's exactly one minute to go, one minute to go. One minute to go. They get the ball out wide. They're going to put it over the top. Back it came to the winger. Rainer, he's almost there. Oh, he reached out and couldn't get it down. Half a metre out, fifth tackle. The pass has gone along the ground. It's half volleyed, wrapped around. Came back to Reynolds. He's going to kick the ball. It's aimed for George Jetson's wing. It's gone into touch. Oh, that's the ball game. That is the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. And the Panthers prevail. By 24 points to 18, we are the Continuous Call Team. The final countdown with the Continuous Call Team, thanks to Australia's richest NRL Supercoach fantasy game at dailytelegraph.com.au forward slash supercoach. So it's all confirmed now. It's 24-18, 24-18. 
The Panthers have prevailed over the Bulldogs who came storming back into it. Full time Cronulla and Canberra in the Holden Cup of play. Oh, no, they haven't. Canberra has kicked the penalty goal right on full time. 34-32. Canberra's Lachlan Croker kicked the penalty goal from 32 out with no time left on the clock to win. So repeating, Canberra have won the Holden Cup game against Cronulla. 34 points to 32. Uh, Steve says, thanks for not covering the game whilst we're out bushwalking. That's our pleasure, Steve. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. Uh, thank you, uh, Piggy. We'll Thank look forward you, to your company, what, next Friday night? You'll be in Bathurst, will you? Nah, Saturday night, Bathurst. Friday night, oh, Friday. Parramatta Bulldogs. Oh, Parramatta yeah. ANZ. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Yes, a 4.30 yeah. game in Bathurst. Mm. And that's uh, Penrith and the uh, Gold Coast. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. If you see yep. Thirsty, just hitchhiking. Can you pick him up? <laughs> pick him up. Bozo, thanks for being uh, with Chuck today. It's really kind of you. And I look forward to your company next week as well. Okay, Ray. Thank you. Oh, no, that's Chuck. Sorry. <laughs> See you next week, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> that's both. See you, big man. Yeah, great afternoon's entertainment. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you were part of it. Um, anyway, full-time, the score, 24 points to 18, 24-18. Penrith have prevailed over Canterbury, who were down 24 nil. I showed a, a stack of ticker to come back into it to be beaten eventually by that six-point margin, 24 points to 18. That wraps up the continuous call team for this weekend. We're back next Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and we hope you join us because we have a stack of fun. Until then, punt iron follow one. I'm back tomorrow by the way at 9 o'clock.